Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Stephen, Arashvi here with you with this week's the 10 minute Torah. I was going to say Devar Torah, same thing. So this week we actually finish off the Torah. This is going to be Ha'azinu, is the last portion that is read on Shabbat. We do have one more portion if you're keeping score. Vizot uh, Habrachav, and these are the blessings. But this portion is read only on Simcha Torah, and then we completely finish the Torah scroll. We re roll it to the beginning of Genesis, where we read the first chapter, which is creation, and then the first three verses of the second chapter, which is Shabbat. Now you're probably thinking, why isn't it all together? Yeah. But, um, you know, why isn't it all together in one chapter? But there is, you know, the Masoretes that divided this out probably had a real good reason. Like, they thought, okay, we've got the six days of creation. Now, new thought. So, before we start talking about Ha'azinu, let's talk about the high holidays a little bit. And let's talk about what they're for, and let's talk a little bit about Torah. So, I guess... Some people may approach the Torah, and I don't know, I'm, I may be speaking out of turn, uh, approach the Torah as a document, as a literature, as maybe a history, maybe kind of an interesting treatise about the beginning of the Jewish people. And to some extent it is. It is. It's a history of Judaism. What it really is, though, it's a manual. It's a manual for living. It is, Torah doesn't really mean law. It really means teaching. And this is God's teaching to us how to be menches. It's a, it's a book of menschlichkeit. You know, mensch, the Yiddish word for man, and the connotation of it is a, a good man, a nice man, or a nice person. Somebody who respects people, who you can count on. And, and that's what Hashem wants us to be. Hashem wants us to be good people. Hashem wants us to respect people. That's why a lot of the commandments involve being respecting the stranger, being charitable to the widow and the orphan and the Levite that really don't have possessions, that need, you know, kind of the mercy and sadaka, the justice of other people. It talks about how to treat slaves, indentured servants, that are also at the mercy of the masters, the bosses, the people in control, and everybody has rights, according to Hashem. You know, Hashem realizes that there are different uh, levels of society, but you know what? We're all created. We're all made in God's image, all of us. And we have to treat each other like we're all brothers and sisters. You know, we have a commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. You can't command somebody to have an emotion or a feeling. You can't tell somebody to love somebody. That's, but what you can tell somebody and what you can demand or command somebody to do is to behave with love. And that is respect. And it's not just our relationship to each other. It's our relationship to Hashem. Moses, Ha'azinah, give ear. Give ear to God's teaching. And he says to, the, to Israel, he says, I... He doesn't use the exact phrase, I you know, I'm Kray or F, you know, stiff neck, stiff neck people. But Moses says to Israel, I know what you're going to do. I know you people. You know, I, I know who you are. I know that you're going right now, you're, you're, you're a tough, rugged bunch. You're going to go, you're going to conquer the land, you're going to settle the land, you're going to work it hard, and you're going to be prosperous through your efforts. And you're going to have a good life. You're going to work hard, but you will reap your rewards. And you will thank Hashem. See, this is why we have all these prayers and all these, why we wear tefillin, why we put up mezuzot, you know, because we want to know where, from where our prosperity is coming, from where is our providence coming. It's coming from Hashem, by Hashem's, by God's good graces. And God is with us as long as we honor our part of the covenant, which is, the commandments, as long as we stay true to Hashem. Now, that sounds easy enough, 
But Moses is saying, I, I know you're going to stray. It's who you are, right? You know, we say it's just that easy paying attention to the commandments. But the bottom line is Judaism is not an easy religion. It is not. You know, you're supposed to pray three times a day. I pray three times a day. Sometimes I miss one for whatever reason. Okay. Um, we have two days of Rosh Hashanah. We had a fast. It was rabbinically mandated. Very few people probably do that. But then we've got Shabbat Shuva, right? It's the Sabbath in between. And then we've got Yom Kippur. No food, water, or pleasure for 26 hours. And then we have more services. And then we have Sukkot. And we're told to build a structure. And we're told to s s eat there, hang out there, sleep there. And then we have Shemini Yitzharit. Then we have Simchat Torah. And then we have a little bit of a rest. We have about five, six weeks of rest. And then, you know, along comes Hanukkah festival, right? But look at all the things we're doing. We have 613 commandments. If you take an oath or a vow, that's another commandment. If you're a Nazarite, you know, you don't cut your hair like Samson, that's three more. Okay? Very demanding. And it, it's tough to keep up. That's why we get these second chances. And that's what Moses is saying. He goes, you're, you're stubborn people. You know, at first you're going to think, oh, wow, look what I did. And you're not going to realize that you did it because God was with you, because you were doing the commandments. Then you're going to say, oh, wow, look at what some of those Canaanite tribes are doing. And we talk about Canaanite tribes, the Hivites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, right? The Gar Gargasites. But it's the same situation today. You know, I, I mean, let's bring up a sore subject. How many Jews celebrate Christmas? Right? It, well, it's a national holiday. Okay, it's a national holiday. But, you know, some people put up Christmas trees. You know, and that's fair. To be fair, some people have, you know, mixed marriages and they run a Jewish household, but the other person says, well, you know, I kind of want to have, have a Christmas tree. Or I want to go on an Easter egg hunt. Sounds like fun. But, you know, back then, it was a lot different. The pagan worships were not civilized. You know, they basically indulged their lust and their temptations. And that's a very slippery slope. You start doing that and all, and it feels good. And you start to forget the morality and the ethics because now the emphasis is on satisfying the desires. Judaism lets you satisfy desires, but there are ways to do it. You know, can you have lust? Yes. As long as you get married, right? That's, you know, that there's your lust. Find the right person and settle down. Other systems, other pagan religions, like the Greeks and the Romans, they were notorious for what they did, right? But Judaism says, God says, I know, I know, I know who you are. I created you. I know who you are. So let's give you some ways to do it. And people say, well, you know, you take a little, I want more and more and more. And next thing you know, you're forgetting about Judaism. And God is starting to say, well, you forgot about me. I'm going to forget about you. And things are not going to be that great. You know, the, the sky is going to be like iron. It's going to close up the land. It's not going to yield its produce. And you're not going to realize, you're going to think, oh, it's just a bad spell. And then it's going to get worse and worse. But the great thing about Judaism is that you can always come back. The Amidah that silent standing prayer that we do. The Talmud calls it the tefillah. The uh, colloquial expression is the Shemona Esrei, which means 18, because originally it was 18 blessings. In the Middle Ages, they added another one, a 19th, that said, keep heretics away from me and keep me away from heretics. And uh, we do that on a, on a typical week, 18 times, six days, three days a week. It's different than the Amidah that we do on Shabbat, where we have the first three blessings, you know, Magen Abraham, which is the patriarchs, Machayim 18, which is God's might of resuscitating the dead. And then we have God's name, Ha'el HaKadosh, which during these days of awe between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, is HaMelech HaKadosh. Then you have those 13 blessings. At the end, you've got the temple service, would say, you've got Thanksgiving, Modim HaNachulach, then you've got Sim Shalom, which is peace. But you have a series where you ask for knowledge, you know, more knowledge than I have, you repent, you ask for forgiveness, and then you ask for redemption. Those have to come in order because God will test you. If you ask for redemption and God grants it to you, it's conditional. Hashem, I've heard, will put you in that position again, see what you do. 
So let's all be mindful of that. Let's all take stock of ourselves. Not an easy thing to do. It's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to look at your flaws, right? Because then people, you know, you can be attacked, right? You can, and people have their self-esteem locked up in that. But let's lock our self-esteem up with God's love and our own love. And let's forgive ourselves and let's forgive others. And let's make a pledge to do better this year, 5783, than we did before. Shabbat Shalom, L'Shana Tova. Wishing all of you to be inscribed and then sealed in the Book of Life.